If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question yourself before moving on. So we have a cord that's initially stuck to the ceiling and then one end is loosened and it's then hanging vertically from the ceiling in this orientation and we are asked to find the change in the gravitational potential energy. Well, we can begin by noting that the question mentions the cord is uniform and what that means is that the mass of the cord divided by its length, which we've called h, is equal to a constant value. We are next going to consider a differential element along the cord, a very small section of the cord, whose length, because it's so small, can be represented as dx. So that would be just this very tiny distance right here. Now we'll notice that this differential element is located a distance that we can call x from the end of the cord that remains pinned to the ceiling. And we can see that as the cord sort of swings its way downward in this fashion, this little differential element is going to move downward. And so perhaps in the other picture, it might be located roughly right here. So that would be that same differential element. Again, its length dx. We'll notice that because it has moved from the ceiling to this lower position, that its gravitational potential energy has decreased. Now, for an ordinary object, that decrease in gravitational potential energy would be equal to negative mgh. For a differential element, we simply just have to make some small adjustments to this formula. For example, the delta u would become du, since we're dealing with a very small amount of mass that has shifted from the ceiling down to a lower position. Therefore, the gravitational potential energy will be a very small amount. The mass of a particular length of the cord would equal whatever length that was multiplied by the so-called linear density. Now, we actually figured out the linear density earlier because we took the entire mass of the cord and divided it by its full length. And we had set that equal to this symbol lambda here. So for a differential element, the mass could be that very minute length, which would be dx, multiplied by the linear density, which again is that lambda value. So back up here in the formula, we're not going to plug in m for the mass because that would represent the entire mass of the cord. Instead, we're going to plug in this expression, which represents the mass of that small differential element. g, of course, is just g, the gravitational constant. The h would be the height that we've moved that differential element down from the ceiling. It would be this right here. We'll go back to the original picture, and we had labeled that distance as just being x. So we can fill that in for the height that the differential element has dropped down from the ceiling. So here is the final equation for the change in gravitational potential energy of the differential element. Now, of course, we want the change in gravitational potential energy for the entire length of the cord. So we're going to have to integrate both sides of the equation. We will do so across the entire length of the cord. So that would be from length zero all the way up to the full length of the cord, which we earlier had called h. Now the integral of du will just become delta u. On the right side, we can pull out the constants of negative one lambda and g. And now the integral of x follows a sort of power rule whenever we have x raised to an integer and we integrate it, we remember from calculus that that becomes x raised to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So in our problem, the n is 1. So we can use this power rule accordingly. And it becomes x squared over 2. Next, we'll plug in the limits of integration starting with the top limit and then the bottom limit and subtracting them. And of course, the 0 squared divided by 2 can be canceled. And let's also recall that the lambda was defined as the mass of the cord divided by its full length, so we can substitute. And then we have an h in the denominator and an h in the numerator, which can cancel, so we can take that one out, leaving just h in the numerator. And now we have a pretty well-simplified expression. It's basically negative mgh divided by 2. And now we can plug in the known values. The mass needs to be converted into kilograms, and the h needs to be converted into meters. So here's the mass, here's g, and there's the height, and there's standard units. And when we compute this, we get roughly negative 0 0.018 joules. And that is indeed the correct answer.
Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.